Welcome to one more session of Fantastic 5 MCQs for NEET PG or FMG. Myself, Dr. Parath, from the faculty. Let's take up the first question. A patient, 58 year old, had laryngeal cancer and undergone NIC irradiation. So, due to cancer, patient was given radiation therapy. After that, she had decreased salivary secretion and dryness of mouth. Which of the following drug is avoided in this? patient so they are asking patient is already having dryness of mouth and decrease in salivary secretion which drug will you avoid that's the question now physostigmin inhibits cholinesterase and increase acetyl choline so you know that cholinergic drugs increase secretions so i can use them glycoperlate is an anticholinergic drug it's an anticholinergic drug which is known to cause decreased secretion dry mouth. So already patient is having dry mouth, I don't give glycoperlate. So where are we using glycoperlate then? Glycoperlate is mainly used for pre-anesthetic medication because it decreases secretions. It is used pre-anesthetic to decrease the chances of aspiration pneumonia and also to decrease the chances of reflex vagal bradycardia. Anticholinesterase drugs also increase acetyl choline and they also increase secretions. Pylocarpine is also a cholinergic drug which increases secretions. So here the answer is glycoperlate is not used. Now tell me what is Zogren syndrome? It's a condition where there is dryness of mouth and dry eye. So we use a drug called pylocarpine. So the answer is B glycoperlate. Moving on to the next question, which of the following alpha agonist is used to treat opioid withdrawal symptoms? Apraconidine, Lofexidine, Tizanidine, Dexmeditomidine. All are alpha agonist, but which is used to treat opioid withdrawal symptom? Remember when a person is taking opioid and suddenly stops, there is sympathetic overactivity. So when we use alpha agonist, they decrease sympathetic release, that is normal release. And that is the funda why we use them. So what are the drug use? The name is called Lofexidin. So we can use Lofexidin or Clonidin to treat opioid withdrawal symptoms. Then we have alpha to agonist Apraconidin and one more drug by the name Brimonidin. Can you tell me where are we using them? We are using to manage glaucoma condition. We have one more alpha agonist. the name is called Tizanidin. Tizanidin, it is also used to used as central skeletal muscle relaxant. Suppose there is muscle spasms, then we can give Tizanidin. Dexmedidomidin, it is used for ICU sedation. Suppose you want to sedate a person in ICU, then we can use it. Now please understand all these Apraconidin, Bremonidin, Lofexidin, Clonidin, Tizanidin, and Dexmeditomidin all are alpha agonists and they have different indications. So tell me where do we use Clonidin apart from this? Clonidin is used to manage hypertension, it is also used to manage tics disorder and also it is used as patch to manage heart flushes in postmenopausal men. Moving back to the third question. A 12 year old girl is bought with a history of scorpion sting and she is found to have tachycardia and hypertension. Now, scorpion sting is very common in India and when there is scorpion sting, there is increase in sympathetic discharge. And that's why there is tachycardia and hypertension. Which of the following drug is used in this case? Atropin. Atropin is the drug of choice for OP and carbamate poisoning. The drug of choice for scorpion sting, yes, most of you know it is prazosin. You know that adrenaline is the drug of choice for a shock called anaphylactic shock. It is a drug of choice for anaphylactic shock. And we also use it during cardiac arrest. And also it is being used when there is severe bradycardia. These are the emergency uses of adrenaline. Then coming to noradrenaline, it's a drug of choice for all the shocks 
whatever shocks you know with high potential. But please remember, noradrenaline will not work on anaphylactic shock condition. Why? You have to tell me in the comment section. So any shock, cardiogenic, neurogenic, hypovolemic, septic shock, and there is hypotension, the drug we preferred is noradrenaline. So for scorpion sting, the drug of choice is prazosin, which is an alpha blocker. Coming to the next question, calculate the loading dose of a drug with therapeutic plasma concentration needed is 20 mg per liter. Volume of distribution is 10 liter. The viability of the drug is 50%. So you pause the video and try to calculate. This is important for NEAT PG, not for FMG. Very, very important. Now what is the formula for loading dose? You all know loading dose depends on volume of distribution. It is given by how much you want to achieve target plasma concentration into volume of distribution divided by if we are giving by non iv roots then there is viability f right so let us substitute the value target what we need to achieve is 20 milligram per liter volume of distribution they have given is 10 liter so sometimes remember they would have given 10 liter per kg and if they have given the weight of the patient suppose the weight of the patient is 50 kg then they are given volume of distribution is 10 liter per kg then you have to multiply 10 into 50 kg then the volume of distribution becomes 500 liters so if they have given this if they have given this here they have not mentioned weight they have not mentioned per kg and all so we will directly take 10 liter but watch out these points when you solve these questions and then viability is given as 50 percent so we take this viability as f so 50 percent will be 0.5 how sir see viability 100 percent means we take it as one the f value will be one 50 percent will be 0.5 so the f value will be 0.5 for calculation so if i substitute that 20 milligram per liter into 10 liters divided by 0.5 so liter liter cancels 20 into 10 is 400 sorry 20 into 10 is 200 milligram divided by 0.5 so how much it will be 200 milligram by 0.5 it's around 200 milligram divided by 0.5 that is equal to so you can write like this 2000 by 5 so 5 4 is a it will be 400 so the value will be 400 milligram so the answer is a 400 milligram so this is how we can come to the answer that the loading dose of the drug is 400 milligram so i know you all left maths and took maths but don't worry okay let me tell you again the target is 20 and the vd is 10 so 20 into 10 is 200 divided by 0.5 so in maths, if I want to remove 0.5, I have to take 1 0 extra, 2000 divided by 5. So 2000 divided by 5 is 400 milligrams. So the answer will be 400 milligram. Okay. Yes. Coming to the last question, the antagonism between insulin and glucagon and glucose level is, what is this antagonism called? So insulin, we know, decreases glucose. Correct. We know glucagon increases glucose correct now insulin acts on tyrosine kinase and glucagon acts on g protein couple receptor so remember if a drug acts on different receptors 
and the actions are opposite then we call it as physiological antagonism so the answer is physiological so what is the rule for physiological the receptor should be different the action should be opposite one is hypoglycemia one is hyperglycemia similarly we have histamine and adrenaline right chemical antagonism means there should be some chemical reaction for example antacids neutralizing hcl heparin and protamine sulfate competitive means both agonist and antagonist agonist and antagonist they both compete for the same site what is non competitive the antagonist bind at another site agonist bind at different site so this is non competitive antagonism so here the answer will be physiological antagonism so that we are finishing this fantastic five mcq so any doubt you can ask me in the comment section if you would like this video you can like this video subscribe and share to your friends thank you all